once had the thought, what is our purpose in life? And my quote says, dying seems less sad than having lived too little, and which is a little morbid, but I would agree, <laughs> because um, without like living a big and full life, there isn't really um, meaning to it, because you wouldn't have um, you wouldn't have learned from your life, and you don't really want to just think about your life and haven't learned anything or done anything with it. Um, for instance, college, we would all want to, all thought of dropping out of college probably, because it's hard, and it's easy just to leave class and just go, like, I've been out of class, like, you know, I've been out of class. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, like, it's worth it to um, have your dream job at the end and to go with that work. No one wants to go to work. It sucks. You do a lot of gross things, probably, like lifting trash, like I had to do the other day. Um, but without doing work, you wouldn't... Um, have anything to look forward to because you wouldn't have your paycheck at the end and um, it wouldn't teach you it teaches you um, to, to earn something for yourself it's not just have everything handed to you um, so I would agree that dying seems less sad than having lived too little um, thank you Well, I thought the opening was fine. The tie into the topic was pretty good. You have a point of view that is clearly expressed. Um, I think you need to lay out the structure a little bit more for us because you kind of just dive into your first example. Your first example is pretty good. You use your own personal experience here, and I think you relate it to us uh, pretty effectively. Uh, people can kind of uh, connect with the way you're talking about the difficulty of you know, trying to go to school, and you, and you use your own, like I said, incidents of missing class as an illustration on that. That's fine. Uh, you're pretty fluent while you're speaking. Everything flows adequately. Uh, there's a little bit of vocal drop toward the end of the speech, so you want to make sure not to fade out on us and make sure to kind of keep things consistent during the presentation. There's, your, your facial expressions are not dynamic, but you don't look uh, particularly nervous. You look a little bit more stoic than you might. When you do use the personal example, you loosen up a little bit and you seem a little bit more naturalistic. And then it's kind of back to, well, I'm just going to be impassive. And, I, I, and you want to be active in all of your expressions while you're speaking to us. Your eye contact, this is interesting. You have very good eye contact with me. I don't know that you looked at anybody else in the class. You know, it was like everybody on that side of the room doesn't really exist. Everybody on that side of the room doesn't really exist. You're not turning your head. You're not looking at different parts of the audience. It's all focused here in the center. And I understand sometimes that's the way it works out because you see me taking notes, you got the camera right here, and everybody kind of wants to focus on what's directly in front of them. But don't forget other people are here and you're talking to all of us. So you kind of have to kind of work that a little bit and make, and make a, an extra effort there. Thank you.